Hey everybody, it's McGann, and today is a good day to talk about war, or at least Captain America Civil War. Ha 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 ha. Now, if the politics end of the movie was too boring for you, and you didn't really get what the split was between the groups, we basically have Team A that is led by Steve Rogers, Captain America, and then we have Team B that is head up by Tony Stark, Iron Man. And Team A does not want to sign this treaty and allow the Avengers to be controlled by the government because then the government gets to decide what they do and when they do it and who the enemies are. So if somebody were to say take over the government just like they had taken over S.H.I.E.L.D., then the Avengers would be put in a very awful position that their hands would really be tied in. And Team B takes the opinion that the Avengers should be controlled by the government. And then that way it's the government's responsibility, whatever happens after that. And it takes the pressure off of the Avengers' shoulders for that personal accountability. And at face value, it seems really odd because you would think that Captain America, he was actually a soldier. So why would he have such a problem with the government telling him what to do now? Well, on that end, it is really simple because it's kind of plain to see that both Captain America and Iron Man are having really emotionally connected issues related to which side they choose. For Captain America, if he allows the government to tell him what to do, that makes his best friend Bucky the enemy. That makes him someone that he may be told that he has to kill when he's trying to save him because he believes in him. And Captain America will not let Bucky go because we're shown that he just lost Peggy Carter at the beginning of the movie. So Bucky is all he has left of his old life. Although I have always wondered about this and it's probably somewhere in the comics that I've just never paid that close of attention to, but does Steve Rogers not have any siblings or did his parents not have any siblings and there is absolutely no relatives alive today, even if they're the grandchildren of his siblings, so that Steve Rogers could be part of a family in modern times? Or is it that the government has stopped Steve Rogers from being allowed to communicate with his next of kin because he's government property? I don't know, but it seems odd to me that Bucky and Peggy are the only two people he can find from his entire previous life. World War II was only about 70 years ago, so I mean, if he had brothers and sisters, their children and grandchildren should be around. So Captain America's position is really clear emotionally throughout the movie, but I think Tony's is a little bit more layered and you kind of have to pay attention a little more closely. Civil War would have you believe that Tony Stark suddenly got this huge chip on his shoulder and wants the government to now control the Avengers because the mother of one victim who died when the Avengers were try trying to save the day confronted Tony at an elevator and now he has a bleeding heart. And that bleeding heart makes him want to give up liability to the government so that all the decisions for the Avengers are up to them. What? I don't buy it. I buy that he feels bad for the mother and the situation and the victims that have been collateral damage along the way, but I just don't see that as being something that would fully stop Iron Man from wanting to be Iron Man, especially in the first Iron Man movie where it's like he killed a lot of people in that movie. It wasn't just one or two. He killed Obadiah in the first movie, which we are led to believe was his best and only friend. I mean, they couldn't have worked that out at all anyway. Okay, sure, maybe that's a little bit different of a situation, but I'm still not buying the bleeding heart scenario here. I believe that Tony wants an honorable out from being Iron Man. He wants something to make him stop being Iron Man and to take the decision out of his hands because then he gets to be blameless for the situation and that in his mind will get him Pepper back because there is a conversation we see between Steve and Tony where Steve asks about Pepper and Tony says she's gone and that he loves her and he doesn't want to lose her but he also doesn't want to stop being Iron Man and he can't get himself to stop like it's an addiction for him. And so if he hands the proverbial keys to the Iron Man suit over to the government, then suddenly he gets to wash his hands of the control and Pepper has no excuse to not be with him in his mind. But the problem there is that Tony has no idea what it's like to be under government control because his father was a World War II superstar who created Captain America. And the entire plot of the first Iron Man movie is because Tony sells weapons to the military. So in his mind, he has always been in control of all of the interactions when it involved the government. 
and no one has ever really told Tony what to do his entire life. So I can't imagine a scenario where Tony Stark would know what it would be like to have the government call him and say, suit up your Iron Man, or we'll lock you up on a floating prison. And I can't speak for all of the other Avengers for why they necessarily choose Team A or Team B in this situation, but that's basically the blanket state as why Captain America and Iron Man are at odds and why they don't seem to be able to see eye to eye in this whole movie. And it's because they're seeing everything emotionally from their point of view. Now, one side note I do want to add in that's not related to the politics. Uh, why does Captain America know classified Hydra information that Tony doesn't know? And I mean that in reference to the scene where Iron Man finds out what happens to his parents and who killed them. And he turns to Captain America and says, did you know? And Captain America replies with, I didn't know who it was. And later in the movie, he goes, well, I thought it would protect you if you didn't know. Now, if this was something where it became public knowledge, I don't see how Tony Stark wouldn't have found this out or one of the many, many people that work for him wouldn't have found this out and told him. How in the world would Steve Rogers know secret information of a Hydra hit that occurred during the time that he was on ice? And that's a big plot hole that I cannot figure out why Steve Rogers would have that information already unless... Hail Hydra?